we have an example problem here. The displacement of a wave traveling in the negative y direction is this displacement as a function of y and t equals 5.2 centimeters sine of 5.5y plus 72t. We want to find the frequency, the wavelength, and the wave speed. All right, so if we compare this back to our general wave equation, just generic, we said the displacement of our wave as a function of position and time. When we wrote it before, we wrote it in terms of the x position because the wave we were talking about was traveling in the x direction. But it had this general function. So we wrote it as a sine function. Comparing this to the wave we've been given in this particular problem, this wave is traveling in the y direction. So in place of x, we have a y. So the number here, this 5.2 centimeters out in front of the sign, this represents the amplitude. So whatever type of wave this is, any piece of the medium is moving a maximum distance from equilibrium of 5.2 centimeters. So our sine function here, the y is replacing our x. So we can say that k, the wave number, is equal to 5.5. We assume SI units on this, which would mean this would be in radians per meter. We know k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. That is our general equation. So we're able, we will be able to solve for our wavelength out of this. So 2 pi over 5.5. 2 pi over... 5.5, 1.14, we really only have two sig figs, so our wavelength is 1.1 meters. So we've calculated part B first, which is totally fine, of course. Coming back to the equation, the 72 is in front of the T term, so that is our omega. And SI units on that would be our radians per second. We know omega is 2 pi f, so we can solve for the frequency here. 72 over 2 pi, 11.46 hertz. In terms of two sig figs, that would be 11 hertz. Now, just total side note, a common mistake in plugging it into our calculator is not putting parentheses around the two pi. So if you are calculating this and not getting the same answer, make sure that you are using the parentheses around the two pi in the denominator. Now the sign in our generic equation, we have a minus sign. But in this equation, given, we have a positive sign in front of the omega t term. And that just has to do with the direction. If you happen to remember, we said the negative sign over here was for the motion or travel to the right. So moving in the positive direction, we had a negative sign. Well, this problem tells us this wave is traveling in the negative y direction, and that's why it has the positive sign. That sign doesn't affect our answer at all, because we just need to use the 72 for omega. Now for C, we're wanting the wave speed. So, oops, wave speed we can calculate wave speed by wavelength times frequency. Now, I mentioned before, wavelength and frequency don't determine the speed, but if we happen to know wavelength and frequency, we can totally use those to calculate what the speed is. 
They just don't change the speed if individually. I do want, we have wavelength, we have frequency, but I do want to show one more thing. We just calculated wavelength by 2 pi over k. And frequency, we just calculated as omega over 2 pi. It turns out we can say the speed of the wave is not only wavelength times frequency, but it is also angular speed over wave number. So I can take 72 over 5.5. And we would get 13 meters per second this way. Now, side note, if I take my wavelength of 1.1 times my frequency of 11 hertz, I only get 12. Keep in mind when we are making calculations, you actually want to use a less rounded number so the wavelength, for example, if I do 1.14 and then the frequency 11.46, then I do get my 13 this way. So rounding errors, keep in mind to use less rounded numbers in intermediate steps. So I would use these intermediate values if I was solving and calculating the speed from wavelength and frequency.